Pittsburgh on the schedule, no. the way the Panthers are playing. And with that said, Jeff Cable joins us. Coach, first of all, uh, congratulations on last night. Uh, we were just kicking around during the break. I mean, nobody rolls into Charlottesville and has a good time playing Virginia, much less trying to find a win. But, man, your guys really, really showed some gumption. I mean, that, that thing gets tied late second half, and all of a sudden you guys went on a run and said, good night, see you later. Uh, <laughs> it's safe to say your guys are playing the best basketball of the year at the right time. Congratulations on the big win. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we obviously have a ton of respect for the University of Virginia and their men's basketball program and what Tony and his staff have done. They have been kind of the premier program, so to speak, over the last 10 years. If you look at it, I think they've won the league six times and won a national championship and have been the most consistent team. And certainly we knew all about their home winning streak and what a tough environment that was. We were very excited about the opportunity. And I think we were really dialed in because we knew we were gonna have to be at our best to have an opportunity to beat one of the hottest teams in college basketball. And our guys came out, we executed the game plan, we fought, we defended, um, and we withstood every run that they gave us. And we were able to continue to punch. And uh, the thing, you know, we've learned how to fight. It took us a little bit longer with young guys and two freshmen starting, but we figured some things out and hopefully we can continue to do that. You said last night, don't blink. And that's exactly what your team did. They didn't blink at all. And I remember you saying a little bit earlier in the season, when you started to get on this win streak, six of the last seven, something along the lines of they just, you guys needed to see it. I think it was in a locker room speech that, that you gave. Did you feel like when, when you started to see this fight, there was a moment, a time, a play, a practice, a meeting that you really felt like the tide's turning for this pit team? I thought one of the best things for us was going on the road, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we had lost a tough one in early December to Clemson. We had blown an 11-point lead at Syracuse. You know, we played North Carolina at home, and we held them the first six minutes without a point. But we couldn't score. We missed open shots, and we got dejected. You know, and then we had those two games. We got blown out by Duke at home. That's the one where I felt like we dropped the rope. And I felt like that really affected us when we played Syracuse at home. And so the best thing at that time was to go on the road. And even though it was against Duke, it was that camera in a tough environment, I just thought us being away and being together and not having any distractions, I thought that helped us. And I thought that game and how we got off to a great start we survived runs, and we were able to just to make big play after big play. I thought that's when everyone, the guys, started to believe um, in who we could be. And then I thought one of the biggest things was the very next game we went on the road at Georgia Tech. And I shared with my guys during my time at Duke working there, I remember Coach K always saying that teams that beat Duke about nine, he had the exact number, but over 90% of the time, they lost the next game. And he called it the Duke hangover. And so I, I, I shared that with our guys. And I talked about how this game, because of what we just did, is really, really important. And we were able to go down and win at Georgia Tech, which has been a tough place for people to go win. Uh, I want to go back to your first statement. because I, I read your comments after the game last night about the fight. Uh, and, and when people hear that, they'll be like, well, you know, can't you just coach them up? And, and, and maybe you can go deeper into this coach. I mean, you, you can sit there and lead a horse to water, right? But I mean, kids got to respond. I mean, you, you can sit there and put all the stuff on the chalkboard and tell all those great stories and all that stuff about the fight. And for folks that don't understand, man, you go on the road in this league, man, you better bring your lunch because nothing's easy. It doesn't matter if you're at Cameron Indoor or Louisville or whatever the case may be. And you're going to get pushed around. You're going to get a bloody nose. But how kids respond, now, that's the fight you're talking about where you go, guess what? Some things are going to go against us, so let's embrace it and then fight back, right? I mean, you can preach all you want, but you kind of have to – you got to live it a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I think, to be completely honest with you, I think one of the biggest things with us in early January – is that I think our guys were a little bit naive. I think they thought that it would be a little bit easier. They thought that we were perhaps maybe a little bit better than we were. 
and just thought that we were going to come out and play really well. If you look at our non-conference, we had two non-conference losses. Um, we lost against Florida and we lost against uh, Missouri. And in each of those games, you know, we pointed them things that like, hey, these are things that we could do to correct it if we just change these couple of things. I think our guys were a little bit naive, to be completely honest. They didn't understand how hard this league is and how you have to show up and how good this league is. And they're great venues. They're really good coaches and really good players. And then we got knocked back. You know, we lose those first two games in late December, early January at Syracuse and then at home to North Carolina. And then we go and we come back after winning at Louisville and we get blown out. I mean, embarrassed by Duke. And that's the one game I felt like we dropped the rope. And I thought that one affected the next one where we lost at home against Syracuse. And I think that's what hardened us. We understood then collectively as a group how hard this is going to be. And you think you're working, we have to work harder. You think you're playing hard, we have to play harder. You think you're preparing, we have to prepare more. We have to prepare harder. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer, especially when you have two guys, this is their first time ever in conference play, and then another two guys, and Ish Leggett and Zach Austin, that this is their first time in the ACC at this level. Uh, it just took us a little bit longer to figure it out. I think we figured it out now, but we have to keep pushing. Coach, you've been uh, in this league a long time as a player, assistant coach, now head coach. Uh, are you ticked off with the national narrative about this conference? Because, you know, Taylor and I do this every day, and it's almost like you're fighting an uphill battle of people running their mouths about the ACC as if they don't realize what this conference has represented in college hoops and the excellence for the consistency for decade upon decade upon decade. And it's not one of those what-have-you-done-for-me-lately deals. But, man, you can go deep into the schedule and into the standings in this conference. And like I said, you're in for a long night if you're not ready to play, if you're from outside this footprint. But does it bother you, the narrative that's floating around nationally about the ACC? Yeah, it bothers me a lot. Um, you know, not even – you know, everything you said about the history of the league is correct. And this is not like long ago history. This is recent history. You know, we had a team in the final four last year. Um, a couple of years ago, we had three number one seeds. We had a team that played for the national championship. We had two teams in the final four. Um, but even if you look at this year, I think we had the third highest non-conference schedule uh, ranking of all the power six conferences in men's basketball. Um, if you look at the number of teams we have in the top 75 of the net, uh, all of those things, it shows that we're elite. You know, they talk about going out and playing people. Well, we did that in the non-conference this year as a league. We performed well. Like last year, we won the ACC Big Ten Challenge. This year, we tied with the SEC and the ACC SEC Challenge. We're nine and three. I think that's right. I think we were nine and three against Correct. the Big yep. 12 right. in non conference games this year. And so I don't understand where this narrative comes from uh, about our league being down, about our league being good. Some of the people that are attacking it, it feels a little bit personal, to be completely honest with you. I think some of the narrative comes from, you know, I know last year it was that North Carolina and Duke weren't they, weren't what they normally are. Well, they played a little bit over a week ago, and both teams were in the top 10. Um, I think both teams are still in the top 10. So they're, you know, certainly terrific teams. But it doesn't mean that there aren't other really good teams. We talk about Miami. Two years ago, they're in the lead eight. Last year, they're in the final four. You look at our teams when we get to the NCAA tournament, how we perform, how we perform in non-conference. And so all the metrics – show that our league is really good, the narrative surrounding it. You know, Mark, to be honest with you, I think part of it, you know, for so long, and I was in the Big 12. I was the head coach in the Big 12, I think, for five years. When I was there, we certainly, all the coaches felt like the league was underrated. And I was coming from the East Coast. They certainly felt East Coast bias and that the league wasn't appreciated. I think when Coach K retired and Coach Williams retired, 
I think nationally there was this thing that, okay, we're going poo-poo or crap on the ACC now because these heavyweights are gone, even with Coach Mahon. Um, and now this whole narrative is going to be about these other leagues. And look, these other leagues are really good. I I'm not discrediting anyone, but our league is really, really good too when we perform on every national stage that we've been on. Amen. Well said. Coach, there's a seat right here at the ACCPM table if you would like to join us anytime because it's almost like we have this conversation every single day on the show. All I ever say is I just I, w I want the same energy all around. If that's what it's going to be, give the same energy to every conference and keep it equal. That's what I keep saying. Before before we let yeah, you go, well, one it's special... interesting. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but it's interesting. Yeah. Like last night after we won, I was asked a question in the media. And it was, you know, you know the narrative is going to be because you guys won at Virginia, and I didn't know at the time that Syracuse had beaten North Carolina. The narrative is going to be that that's not good for the league. It shows you that that's not good. And my thing was, okay, I just watched the night before Kansas get beat by 30-plus against Texas Tech. I don't think mm -hmm. Texas Tech was ranked. Certainly Texas Tech is an unbelievable place to play and they have a really good program. They're having a great year. But instead, the narrative was, well, that shows you how good the Big 12 is. And the Big 12 is really good. But why is that same energy, like you just said, not given to our league? And instead, it's maybe discredited what we did, what Syracuse did, and it's more of an indictment of the ACC. It's not right. It's not accurate. And to be quite frank, I'm tired of it. <laughs> yeah. That may, well, join the club because we feel yeah. the same thing. And, and you know, and, and where college basketball is, uh, top 10 teams on the road against unranked opponents, 34 and 34. I mean, it's hard to win. I don't care how much tradition, I don't care how many banners you got up. I mean, you got a number like that. You go on the road, you better bring it because there's a lot of really good basketball teams around the country. I mean, that's just the way a it is. A lot of really, really good basketball teams, a lot of good coaches, yeah. College basketball is so different today because, number one, we're still in the COVID year, so you're able to get guys for longer. It's easier to transfer. There's more parity. One of the other things about our league that I hate when I hear people say, well, it's not what it once was. You know, you look at the players of the year. This is something that was said last year about the ACC players of the year, and you compare them to years past. College basketball is not what it used to be. I don't care what league you're in. As good as these other conferences are, you can make a case that it's not the same Big East as it was in the 90s or early 2000s. It's not the same Big Ten. You know, as good as these teams are in the Big Ten, there's no Fab Five. Like, you look at those teams. There's no Glenn Robinson. As good as these guys are, you can go through every league like that. Um and so these narratives that are out there, are, you know, that are about our league, again, that's why I said it seems personal. Um, and hopefully we can figure out some way to change that narrative. Well, the, the cool thing about it is yep. uh, March normally rolls around and the ACC is looking around and going, hey, this is cool. We're keeping score now. Uh, the league's done a pretty yeah. good job <laughs> in that department, whether it's uh, five teams in or ten teams in. And by the way, before we let you go, uh, it's about time your high school got the jersey and the rafters, man. I mean, I think it's I think that's a whole mojo thing working for you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. It was awesome to be back and to uh, have a chance to experience that. Uh, I had a lot of former teammates there. Um, my family was there, and it just brought back a lot of memories. I wish my dad and my high school coach, Coach Miller, could have been there, but they were there in spirit. Um, and just had a chance to have a lot of relive a lot of great memories. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of special moments in my three years at South New Senior High School and got a chance to be a part of a state championship team with some outstanding teammates. And it was great to kind of go back and take my kids there. Two of my kids were able to come. My oldest daughter had basketball practice that she couldn't miss. <laughs> but my middle daughter and my son, they were there along with my wife, my mom, my brother cousins it was, it was it was really cool to experience that excellent cool. well listen uh, nothing like family uh, amen to all that good stuff keep up the great work we look forward to seeing you down the road especially in dc all right see you guys thank you for thanks, all you coach. do you got it. thanks guys.